there has been a fair amount of talk about the de-Russification of Baltic states because of the war in Ukraine. And it's actually a myth. Like, it's not real. These claims are made from some people far away, from some people in America who actually do not know how the situation is like on the spot. Um, I can talk about the real situation, about the real observations in Dobele in Latvia. Latvia is one of the Baltic states. And I must say that uh, very recently I encountered a person who was a friend of a friend of mine who was only speaking Russian. He was born in Rezekne, in a uh, like fifth largest city of Latvia. And uh, he did not speak any Latvian, like any at all. The thing is, he was born in Latvia 80 years ago. He has lived in Latvia 80 years. And no, he was not eager to talk in the Latgalian regional dialect. No, he was a Russian person and he uh, wanted to talk in Russia. He meant, uh, yeah, this is, this is part of Russia. Let's talk Russian. And uh, if I started to complain that after 80 years, maybe it would be appropriate to know at least a little bit, like uh, on a basic level, the language of the country in which you are born, in which you have lived for 80 years. And he got really upset and started to accuse me of being a Nazi and uh, nationalist and all kinds of things. I don't speak Russian and it's by choice. Like uh, I had plenty opportunity to learn it. I could learn it and I do not learn it because of political reasons. And uh, well, I was talking with several people about this issue and I must say that um, I received mostly opinions who supported his stance. So mostly, even from Latvian people, who, uh, opinions who said that it is okay that he does not even know a little bit of Latvian language after 80 years living in Latvia, after being born here. And I received one opinion, like like the most uh, uh, far-right opinion was, uh, you just uh, shouldn't get involved with people like that. And I didn't get involved with that person for a long time. I argued a little bit and then I went away. Um, but uh, like even from Latvian nationals who on other issues are kind of nationalist, supporting Latvia, Latvian identity, uh, Latvian statehood, their opinion mostly is like, well, l l let them alone, just don't get involved with them, but don't do anything about it. It's not their opinion that it is wrong, that it shouldn't be like that. No, 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 no. Just don't get involved with these people. Yeah, they exist. Don't get involved. To be honest, um, that's not uh, the first encounter with the person who his entire life has lived in Latvia and does not speak any Latvian. Um, there are some uh, very Russian villages here in Dobla municipality. These are mostly former Soviet military oriented villages. I would say Gardene and Kirpani, where I have encountered older persons who were not capable to talk with me in Latvian at all. And just insisted on talking with me in uh, Russian. These persons exist, um, but they were not accusing me, but I was 
meeting them because I was distributing my political leaflets. Um, but these people exist. They don't exist somewhere near Russian border, somewhere in some little Russian enclaves, but um, they are all over the place. The more people you know, the more you go out, um, the more places you visit, the more you will encounter these people. And it's just not good. It's just not good. And, and it makes me actually a little bit sad that there are people on internet who actually talk about some kind of derosification of Latvia. Even though I have to admit that uh, on some mm, particular limited issues we can't talk about a derosification of Baltic states. But uh, it doesn't feel like that on the ground. It doesn't feel like that. Um, my opinion is that people who do not speak Latvian on a normal person-to-person uh, -person talking level and who have been living here for multiple decades have no place here. Like, none. Like, they sh should just be, um, like, removed from state territory. They are hostile enemies, they are hostile spies, they don't have any right to be here, they are a massive threat to the national security. That is uh, my opinion, my political stance. And uh, I am standing pretty much alone with this opinion. And uh, this opinion exists in Latvian society, but it is more like on a corner. It's, it's like a very small percentage of Latvian society. Um, in other countries, it would be considered kind of strange. That a person can be born in a country and live there for 80 years and still not know the language of the, con uh, of the country in which this entire time has been spent. It would be considered strange, it would be uh, considered uh, paranormal, crazy maybe, mentally retarded, something like that. Not here, not here. Here, uh, people accuse me that I don't know Russian history, that I don't know this and that, and, and, and that I should just go away, I should just go away. Not them. Nobody, like literally nobody said um, that these persons should leave Latvia. No, no, I should just not interact with these people. I should go away. I should go like a little bit further away, 100 meters, 200 meters, and not interact with these people and let them in peace. That's the most uh, nationalistic most pro-Latvian stance, which I have heard. And it's just messed up. It really is. And I have very, very bad feelings about uh, the potential situation in a potential war with Russia. So when Russia decides to invade, because um, I was being told that in the border regions with Russia, such situations that people do not talk Latvian at all are far more common uh, than I think. That in, for example, Daugavpils, second largest uh, city of Latvia, which is very close to the border of Russia, very close to the, to the border of Belarus, about 80, no, 95 to 97 percent of people talk Russian in their everyday life. Yeah, the percentage of people who are capable of talking Latvian on some level is higher, but there is like a fair amount of people who do not talk Latvian at all. And they can 
only exist because state institutions and the people around them accept it. You don't speak Russian? Okay. So just let's speak Russian. Um, no, no, no. Excuse me. Um, you don't speak Latvian? No problem. Let's speak in Russian. Um, you can live here for eight years without learning to speak any Latvian only if there is a nurtured environment, a state-supported um, environment which allows you to live 80 years without learning any Latvian language. Even the political parties in Latvia who are more on the right specter, I would say in this case Nationala Apvena in Niba, uh, translated into English it will be national, uh, I don't know, organization or like a national party, Apvena I don't have the right translation right now in uh, my head, sorry. But like, uh, they have uh, always proclaimed to be pro-Latvian values and pro-everything Latvian. Well, their top politicians know about this stuff. They have been visiting these places close to the border and they have spoken with local politicians. They are even real Latvian politicians who do not speak any Latvian, like any Latvian at all. Uh, for example, there was for a, a long time such a place called Zilupe Municipality and they have had this uh, mayor Agafono or something like that. Like, like, like he was like the chairman of the municipality of uh, Zilupe and he did not spoke Latvian like at all. He, he was not uh, uh, some random uneducated guy who was living in his little village few kilometers from the border to Russia. No, 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 no. He was like an elected political person uh, and, and he had encounters with high-ranking Latvi Latvian state officials and he never spoke uh, in, in Latvian. He was not capable to do so. And uh, yeah, he <laughs> some kind of uh, kind of uh, got away with it. He got away with it only because um, Riga, Latvian government, Latvian top state officials wanted to for him to get away with. It. They supported his stance, his opinions, uh, his strong desire and will to not learn Latvian language. And so he could get away with it and be even elected as a politician, as a municipal representative, even as the chairman, like, like as the main boss of municipality. And, uh, yeah, he was obviously also involved in all kinds of corruption, very nasty corruption. But, uh, yeah, the Latvian state is deeply rotten when it comes to corruption. I have said it multiple times. And obviously he could get away with it because, uh, yeah, there are no effective corruption prosecution methods. There is some imitation, some simulation of fight against corruption. Like uh, on a very symbolic level, yeah. Something like that exists here. Something like that exists, but like a harsh stance, like a harsh will to fight against it does not exist here. Here exists here in Latvia exists um, a determined will from state institutions, um, from courts, 
and from police to persecute people who steal. Like, that's not okay. If you steal from a store, you are being persecuted. If you uh, break into an apartment, into a garage, you are being persecuted. Um, if you drink alcohol in public, you are being persecuted. If you are being very drunk in public uh, spaces, uh, you are being persecuted. Like, when it comes to these issues, actually real fines are to be encountered. Like, real punishments are uh, expected. Like, it's, it's a bigger crime here in Latvia to steal uh, an item, which is worth like 300, 400 uh, euros, than to steal a billion dollars from state. It's a bigger crime. Yeah, to, 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 to go to a store and steal something which is worth 300, 400 euros than to steal a billion from state. And such a stance is being enforced by the government, by police, by the persecuting institutions and by the courts. It's the reality. And this goes hand in hand with the pro-Russian stance of Latvia. So, in conclusion, um, we cannot talk about a derussification of Latvia on wider scale. On some limited issues, yes. On some very specific fields, yes. But when it comes to the big issues, to the main issues, there is no such a thing like derussification of Latvia. Latvia is still very, very, very Russian, Russified. That's a fact. Thank you so much for watching.